Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I actually wanted to give you my personal opinion, I guess my honest kind of an opinion about the game that I've been recently playing called Surviving Mars. Now since uh, the game came out uh, and basically we're now kind of unofficially or officially allowed to speak about it and review it, I wanted to kind of basically tell you if it's worth your money or not. It is 40 bucks so it is kind of expensive. But having played for about 30 hours now and almost finished one of the campaigns, I think I have a pretty good opinion whether it's worth it or not. Specifically because it's actually based on another game I've played a lot here on, ch on the channel. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now, if you've been on the channel long enough, you may remember that about two and a half years ago, back in all 2015, when I had this silly logo uh, slash introduction that I long removed since then, uh, I basically was playing this game called Planet Base. Planet Base, in a sense, is kind of like surviving Mars. You you build a base on a, uh, on different planets. Uh, it starts relatively easy on a Martian-like planet, and it progresses to more uh, difficult stages. The game was actually pretty awesome. It did it did have a lot of bugs and a lot of sort of inconsistencies. Th things would often go wrong because the game was still in early access. And then I think eventually the developers actually kind of abandoned it. At least that's what they knew uh, or more recent reviews say, um, but overall it was actually pretty fun and you could usually get this game on sale for about 10 bucks, full price is about 20 bucks. Then Surviving Mars was announced and I was really excited about it and honestly it kind of has all of the best parts from this game, but at the same time all of the worst parts as well. So let me kind of give you uh, a breakdown of what I mean by this. And I guess to kind of show you uh, what I mean by this, I just wanted to go into the late game here. Basically, this is what uh, Soul 276, 276 days later, when I have a pretty, uh, pretty solid colony established here. Basically, we have about 284 people, 90 drones, and uh, you know, lots of everything, lots of, lots of pipe leaks, lots of money. Things are happening. Things are running pretty smoothly. Um, as a matter of fact, this was a, a relatively easy game because I was playing as the United states where you constantly get funding and upgrades but this is what you would expect from the late game now there are some really cool parts about this um and specifically i guess the fact that you can totally build up a tremendously large base way way bigger than anything in planet base and you can also um relatively easily fail miserably like i did in my actual playthrough however this is where things get a little bit uh, different i guess it really depends on your starting conditions now let me let me rewind this a little bit, and uh, this is kind of where I think I disagree with how this game um, is sort of laid out. In the beginning, when you just start the game, you are given this option of starting as um, first of all a different nationality, or I guess represent a different country, or be international in general, and also you can pick a different command commander. Now it does kind of give you the bonuses and pluses and. Um, pros and cons, but it doesn't really explain them very well. I mean, it's hard to, for you to imagine that you will need money so badly, or that Russia is basically one of the worst possible countries you can play as, even though it does say it's hard. Um, and when I say it's the worst country to play as, it's, it's just, it's ridiculously difficult, to the point where I was not able to survive for longer than a few days. And if you have, great, but I really needed to push myself to the limits to try to survive as this particular country. Um, even Spacey, which is basically SpaceX in a nutshell, was so difficult, as you've seen from my playthrough. Um, at the same time, you can also pick a commander that has different upgrades and different sort of bonuses, but that at the same time is not as useful as the country itself. So it's a little bit, I guess, unfair in some sense that USA has a tremendous advantage over other countries just because it gets periodic uh, funding. So maybe just maybe this will uh, improve with patches later on, but this does create a very uh, fair disadvantage for certain countries. Um, on the other hand, the other thing that uh, does kind of uh, change the game a little bit is your um, location around Mars. Now, this does add flavor to the game, and I actually do like it a lot, but, like, so I was playing my first game right here on Olympus Mons. And as if you've watched the video that uh, or the playthrough that I've been making, um, things were going poorly and specifically it's the things that were caused by the constant dust storms now 
it would be very helpful if you, when you start the game, something explains to you a little bit more about what these dust storms entail, and, and specifically that nothing would be working and you will have no oxygen production, no water production. It is briefly mentioned right there in the bottom, in the two bottom lines, but it just, it's not as um, well explained as when you start playing and you realize, oh no, my people can't breathe anymore because there's a dust storm. Um, because, you know, when you hear a dust storm, you don't expect that things will just stop, suddenly stop, stop working. Um, also, uh, well, dust devils were not really a big problem, but there are supposedly meteors and cold waves, but I have never seen them in the game. Uh, after my three playthroughs, I have not seen a single... Uh, okay, I've seen meteors, but I have not seen a cold wave, even though it's supposed to happen and there are actual uh, buildings that are supposed to protect you from those. I'm sure there's, they're like more often here in the north and maybe in the south. Yeah, there you go. But not as common in, um, in on the equator, which um, does kind of, even though they're supposed to be there, it does create a bit of a, I guess, uh, unfair advantage or disadvantage of being in certain areas. Uh, like, for example, if you play here um, in the Elysi Elysium Plains, it will be ridiculously easy. You'll be basically breathing through your whole game. But maybe that's actually an advantage that you can actually choose your location and explore different areas. Uh, so in that sense, I actually do enjoy uh, the choices given to you here. Now, despite uh, the relatively good graphics and also relatively um, realistic science and basically just relatively fun gameplay, at least for the first few hours, almost every game I've, I was playing ended up in pretty much the same. The very somewhat annoying resource management, and basically here we're talking about uh, making sure you're building buildings where there is uh, resource deposits and then um, basically uh, making sure that all of your resources are well managed and um, at this point, it actually becomes kind of boring. There's no more exploration. There's no more really advancement in any way. Uh, there's really not much to do other than just wait for more research to finish. And it just so happens that the research itself becomes progressively more difficult to uh, get to. So right here, I'm still uh, in my USA game trying to finish some of the last ones. But the cost for this is 16,000 research, uh, re research points. The cost in the beginning was only like maybe two or one thousand and you don't really get that many uh research opportunities unless you build up entire cities of, with like universities so it's just a waiting game and it does become really unknown I, I was at some point just watching tv shows while essentially running this game doing the research uh in the background not exactly the fun gameplay i was looking for you do get to build cool um, wonders, like for example, this one right here, which I believe is called um, Mo Moholi, Mo Moholi, Mohol Mine. Not ex not sure how to pronounce it. It's not well explained. But anyway, this thing right here um, is a wonder that drills deep down into Martian uh, soil and um, basically produces metal and rare metals and also um, some heat around it. In other words, it's a it's kind of like a free resource production, even though it's very expensive to build. There's a few wonders you can build which are pretty awesome and do make the game more flavorful and more interesting. But I think once you basically build all of these in the game and once you know what the research is all about and once you kind of know where the game is going to end, um, replayability here is relatively low. Unless, of course, you're one of those people that just want to finish the game as Russia on like the most difficult part of Mars. There is really very little to do afterwards. Um, like you do get to build things like lasers that um, destroy asteroids. You get to build some really cool um, telescopes that will give you um, access to some other research. But other than that, I just think it gets kind of stale after about maybe I would say four hours of gameplay because you'll, you'll get to the point where your colony is functioning just fine by itself. You'll also start experiencing a tremendously large amount of resources and uh with some exceptions you actually not have any purpose to play now they did include this um flavor in here where you get to choose your own storyline and i believe it's right here under the mystery choice where you get to choose anything from easy to normal to hard and i tried some of these and they're basically like these mission mini missions that you get as you play the game like the one that i recently had was basically building four different stations around the um solar system and to do that you basically had to provide resources for the rockets that land and you just had to supply them with resources uh, um you had a certain time period where you had to finish them and as soon as you send them with those resources you'll get a certain upgrade or a certain bonus 
uh, there was a bit of a story behind it and a little bit of dialogue, but other than that, that's really all these add, and that's just not enough to have a replayability to the game. So what is my kind of final um, opinion slash conclusion about Surviving Mars? Well, honestly, as an educator and as a person that loves teaching through science, I think it's an amazing game. It's definitely a game that will teach you a lot about science, a game that will teach you a lot about space exploration, um, making, establishing colonies on Mars, and essentially the science behind it and the difficulties behind it. Uh, but after about maybe 5 to 10 hours of playing Surviving Mars, you will find yourself in a situation like this, where basically my colony sort of functions by itself. I have the space shuttles delivering everything to everybody who needs it. I have uh, mines that produce infinite amounts of metal and rare metals, which are essentially money. And I also have uh, pretty much everything else that's uh, suitable for life on Mars, including this huge colony that's just basically farms that produce food that is then delivered to the rest of the colony. So it's a totally automated um, colony. Uh, I haven't I haven't really built big domes yet, I, as a matter of fact, I decided not to really focus on the larger domes because to me they seemed inefficient, they seemed like a waste of money and resources because why do that when I can build smaller domes that require practically no uh, maintenance fees? And uh, in that sense, the game is kind of maybe not entirely well thought out, but still, I personally find it fun. I don't like the micromanagement aspects and I don't really enjoy the fact that uh, it does become kind of stale near the end, but the science and the actual um, realism, I guess, in a sense, is pretty cool. There are obviously some unrealistic aspects in some sense, there's certain things that are not super realistic, like the actual time passage. Um, but uh, overall, though, I would say I would give it like a one thumb up, not a very enthusiastic thumb up, but definitely a game that I would consider purchasing for some friends. Now, I would totally wait for a sale though and i got some funding see like this is this is the beauty of playing as a usa and also being able to produce rare earth uh, metals or rare metals that is that you can send to earth constantly because you rarely run out of money now but anyway so i would definitely wait for a sale because despite being a pretty interesting game i think it still needs some modding it needs some development and this was always the case with uh the games produced by the you know the infamous paradox they create amazing games they create very realistic games they create educational games but their games often need a little bit of additional modding and development before they become absolutely stellar and beautiful this was true for hearts of iron um, europa Uni universalis this was even true for the um the game that I love playing in my off time called Stellaris, which is probably one of the best space games I've ever played in my life. But it did take a while to get there. So maybe after a year, this will become an absolutely incredible learning tool, playing tool, gaming tool, and basically game that will just like be top of the line in terms of colony management and colony um, development. But for now, I would have to say, be kind of careful because for $40, you might get about 10 hours of fun gameplay. But after this, it sort of turns a little bit tedious uh now nevertheless i'm going to be playing this i'm actually thinking of starting another gameplay um or another playthrough maybe sometime in the future because it is a super interesting scientific concept to me as an educator to you as a gamer it might be a hit or miss so just bear that in mind Overall, definitely one of the best colony management games I've played, and definitely one of the most interesting, most scientifically realistic games I've played ever. So I do like this game myself. Thank you for watching. This is all I wanted to say about the amazing Surviving Mars. And continue watching the playthrough or the Let's Play that I started if you still haven't started it. It might take me a few more hours to finish it, but I'm doing very poorly in my game as uh, Space Y, and Elon Musk is most likely going to fail in this mission that I started. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. This is what a colony looks like after about 15 hours of gameplay, especially if you basically focus on just establishing a self-running, self-maintaining colony that does everything by itself. I literally can just go for like an hour to get some food and it will most likely develop even further. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Pipe leak reported. And now I have a pipe leak. Are you serious? I just literally said that you're self-managing. Can you fix this please for me? Thank you.